Hey, everybody. Welcome to Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today from New York, Amy Rosenfeld. New York, hey, I'm here at Columbia. Yes, it's good. Columbia University, she's, she's in her lab. Look at those colorful boxes and yeah, all sorts of good stuff. Yeah, how are you stuff. doing? Oh, you got the... Um, yeah, you got the biohazard out. bag left. <laughs> I got it came back. I'm busy. I'm busy. My little rotator and my tubes and my boxes and some useless piece of computer equipment <laughs> for some useless micro microscope. I'm busy. Okay, what should we start with here, Amy? No, no. What's what, what's up today? Well. People are still on the lab thing, Questella, yeah, because that new articles have been published and they're saying, I'm getting tons of emails saying I have to address it. You know, the idea that SARS-CoV-2 came from a lab in China, which we have addressed many times on TWIV. So I'm not sure it's worth the time. Um, Once again, it comes down to how is it going to resolve how is the continuation of this discussion going to end the pandemic today? I have new glasses. Yeah, I decided to make a change and Amy approved them. Yeah, my yeah. fashion advisor. I don't have the Manolos and the Louboutins, but by the way, uh, the other day, Amy wore some nice black shoes, uh, leather shoes to the lab. So she doesn't always wear sneakers. I wore my Gucci loafers from when Tom Ford was cut was the head designer. You can't find them anymore. Uh, someone wants to know, um, uh, Plinky, if the plaque assays are in the fridge. <laughs> Why would you put plaque assays in the fridge? No, they're in the incubator. They're cooking. You got to cook. No yeah, you gotta refrigerate. Cook them. Don't refrigerate so them. Here's a thread that's been going since the pre-show about 10 minutes before. You know, Santiago was asking if this could have come from a lab, uh, say, accidentally, because we've got past the idea that it was engineered. Could it have come from a lab? But the point is, folks, nobody has these viruses in the laboratory. They have pieces of sequence. And so the, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, Zhang, Zhang Li Shi, said she didn't have this virus or anything related to it. So I believe her. She's a good virologist. And if you think you want to distrust all of them, well, that's your right, but it's not evidence. So we know this is highly related to bat viruses uh, that have a common ancestor. And it's a matter of finding the ancestor at some point by, by wildlife screening. And we haven't done it yet. I think we need to focus on Vaccinating people, don't you think, Amy? That's what I said. Yes. I didn't understand how continuing this conversation was going to end the pandemic today, nor do I understand how it's going to prevent the next one. I see no reason to continue to waste my time when the horse is already out of the barn. There's no reason to blame anybody, right? Who left the barn door open? That's right. Okay. Well, you know, you're not going to get the horse back into the barn, right? So now you have to figure out what to do. Someone said my glasses don't match my shirt. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Do you want me to put the other ones back on? I can put them no, back I on. No, I like the blue. They don't, I do they have don't a blue shirt. To, they don't need to match the shirt. People obviously I'm, don't know anything. You match the shoes, the belt, and the glasses. Not the shirt? No. Hey, look, we get to see Plinky. Usually she oh. has a picture of her house in San Francisco. If I ever see a fruit bat flying overhead, I think I'll pass out. No, you won't see any fruit bats in San Francisco, right? No, they don't live in this part of the world. The uh, Wall Street Journal has an article called The Bats Behind the Pandemic. It's behind a paywall. Well, you know what? Amy has a subscription. Andrew has a subscription. <laughs> I use 
<laughs> I use Andrew's subscription. Hey, I get free scientific advice. Do you know how much I've saved him? <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. It's Minnie Mouse. See, I got it right this time. I don't know what article she's talking about. So this Klassen is a guy who wrote a, this bogus article saying something about prions and SARS-CoV-2. Uh, we, we addressed it on a TWIV. Yeah, I, I've just forgotten it. It's just so bogus, Nazareth. It's not worth spending time on. Uh, I forgot what the whole thing was, but if someone wants to remind me, I'll address it again. Let's prions? answer. Yeah, prions. He made something up that was just bogus. You know, folks, I don't randomly say things are absurd or bogus unless they really are. I really, and Amy is even more strict than I am. Oh, yeah. She, By far. She, sets, By she far. tells me when I'm off, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By far. Pray on. Kate says, how do viruses like hep B and HIV sequester? Is a sequestered virus such as hep B transmissible? Well, they're not really sequestered in that sense. HIV, you know, permanently puts its DNA into your stem cells, and so it's stuck with you forever. But the virus is still reproducing and, and transmitting. It's not stem cells. Yeah, hematopoietic stem cells. What, what do you think it is? I thought that it being in, what are they? Uh, Long-term memory B cells, T cells, yeah. I mean. Yeah, okay, I thought that's fine. So. I thought that that the CD thirty four positive cells were the stem cells, and it was very controversial. And that's I true. It that, is. It is. Yeah, the lady yeah. in uh, in in Michigan from David's lab. She she's published that, but has been a long time, and it, yeah, it is controversial. Yeah, but Hep B is always Hep B is always reproducing, Kate, in the liver, because and that's where the damage is coming from, the immune response. So you you can transmit, but both of those have to be transmitted, you know, by blood or or sexual activity. So sequestered is not really a good word because it is transmissible. I didn't understand what sequestered me meant in that context. <clears throat> I can tell you that Amy is sequestered in the laboratory tonight. I am. I'm all by myself with the door closed. I'm sequestered. I'm pushed away. Yeah. Joshua wants to know. I saw that Ohio is offering a one dollar. I don't know what What's the M, M mean. For all people getting a vaccine, I live in Philly and got Moderna. Can I get the J and J so I can enter? Oh, it's a it's a contest to win a million dollars. Sure. Uh, why ahead. not? Sure, you can get the vaccine again. Why not? Yeah. Thank you, Kate, for your super sticker. Much appreciated. We're getting closer to the studio, right, Amy? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We went and design. We went to talk about designing it. Yeah. Okay, back to Mini. Class and claim about COVID vaccine and prion risk. Yeah, I think he had some idea that getting an mRNA vaccine was going to. Induce protein conformational changes like prions. Totally bogus. No basis for it whatsoever. I RNA think we, is going to do that. Well, the protein may be that it's translated from it, right? So all of a sudden, <clears throat> Spike is going to take on new properties that it's never had before. So D here, D614G says, I think the prion thing was the idea that the vaccine would lead to defective protein that somehow is magically like prions. Yeah. It was Magically no basis delicious? for delicious, <laughs> like the Chimes commercial, like your cinnamon ice cream, right? Yeah, my cinnamon ice cream, but that's not going to give me any prions. It's going to do other no. things, but not going to give. So, me so any this prions. is an example of someone just trying to make stuff up without any backing. It's not worth your time, Nazareth. Is he really yeah. a scientist? He really no, has a lab and a PhD. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Did someone say he is? I don't know. I'm asking. I have no idea who this lunatic is. Um, Adit just said, what do you think of the research linking SARS-CoV-2N to sequestration of stress granule nucleator G3BP? Did you see that, Amy? I did not see the paper. I'm not a big uh, stress. I'm not a big comp 
proponent for stress granules being biologically significant. I mean, it's like 5% of total protein and maybe that amount of RNA. Um, they're non-membrane aggregates. Maybe they're regulated, maybe they're not. Maybe I'm biased from my postdoc, but I don't know. I'll, get, I'll have to look at it. Not, it wouldn't not be surprising big... because um, other end proteins or other viral proteins have been shown to sequester things like G3BP and TIAR and other stress granule proteins. And there's sequestration yeah. is a good word, right, Amy? Yeah, it is a good word. But still, like even in the coronavirus field, the two labs have yet to show that that has any biological significance. And I can tell you that when I did these studies as a postdoc, so I tried to repeat somebody's work and they mm -hmm. had uh, used um, yeast and stuff and we were using mammalian cells. And when they did it in live yeast, they saw, they saw ag no aggregates. They saw no aggregates when they did it in live yeast. And then they had to fix the yeast, which causes you to dehydrate. And then they saw the aggregates. Shocking. That dehydration results in aggregation. Amy, Amy's word, shocking. Yeah, shocking. Marty said, do you know about this crap that is going around saying that if you are near someone that has Pfizer vaccine, it's dangerous as they shed, women can become infertile? Yeah, it's all crap, Marty. You don't shed anything. You shed when you get infected with SARS-CoV-2. It's absurd. And women do not become infertile. It's, that's just a crappy rumor that got started. And it bothers us so much, we're not even going to go into more detail. Right, Amy? No, not worth my time. Progress oh, here's a good one. Next question. What recent article or preprint did you find most interesting to read in the last week? Amy, wh which one did you find the most interesting? Does it have to be SARS-CoV-2? No, he, he just said, what article or preprint? Um. So I really like this article by David Bassler, Bassler um, broad neutralizing and broad neutralizing monoclonal antibodies that can be targeted to Nipah and Hantavirus, because that's something that we're truly interested in at this moment in time in research. And pre the other, I guess it's kind of a preprint, although it's an accelerated article is this article that's in Nature on Monday by the Barrick Lab that looks at um, making a, like a universal coronavirus vaccine and um, a conserved region that, oh my God, get this. Conserved means it doesn't mutate. Shocking. Uh, yeah, I know, considering where we are and who's two, three floors below us. Um, and uh, they show that it like protects, or it's, it, I think they show it protects against CoV-2 and hmm. OC43 and some other stuff, or it, or, or what they think is going to, like, you could possibly, you know, fit a crystal ball, what they think, like, the next pandemic coronavirus may look like or something. My my paper would be the nature immunology paper we did on TWIV yesterday, which shows that the E protein of SARS-CoV-2 engages toll-like receptor 2 on the cell surface, which turns on the production of inflammatory cytokines. And in a mouse model, if you, if you block TLR2, you can reduce the disease severity after infection. Really cool. And that was given to me by Amy, who yeah, feeds so like me a steady stream. Steady stream of papers. Yeah, I like that one too, but I like the pan neutralizing antibodies more. Would a 35 day interval between doses for both Pfizer and Moderna let the immune response mature enough, or would you go for a longer interval? It's fine. It's fine, yeah. It's 35 convenient. is good. That's fine. If everything is fully vaccinated around my niece, can we pass on COVID to her? Let's say one of us comes in contact with someone who has COVID with no mask on. Can we pass it on to my niece who is not vaccinated because she's young, right? I would assume you, so. 
I would assume that she's young, I mean, and not vaccinated. No, I don't think you can pass it on. Probably not. I think your shedding is much reduced after vaccination. I'm not even sure that they're infected. Just because you came in contact with somebody doesn't mean you automatically got infected. 12-year-olds can get vaccinated on Thursday. Hey, I can get I vaccinated, Amy. Excellent. Can I? That can you true. take me to get my vaccine? I can. I can. How long after infection can viral RNA be detected using RT-PCR? Do you have a number, Amy? Well, the majority of people are PCR negative by... And what is infection? Onset of symptoms? Sure. Sure. So the majority of people are PCR negative about five to seven days after the onset of symptoms. Yeah, I mean, some people persist longer though, right? 20, 30 days, the, especially the very sick people, but they're not infectious. Well, Nishe wasn't very sick. He was sicker than Ian, no, but he wasn't. I mean, no, I mean hospitalized patients. Daniel not says some of the hospitalized. Not always, but some of them may, yeah. Yeah, but but like it doesn't really car that it doesn't really car like because like Nishe never went to the hospital. He was like PCR positive for like I don't know eight weeks. Really, eight weeks? It was, yeah, it was like ridiculous. Wow. Um, well, no, that's the wrong one. How would researchers create a vaccine that is geared toward T cell immunity rather than just the B cell? Well, it's very hard to do because all the proteins have both B and T cell epitopes, right, Amy? Yes. So, you know, you give people spike, you get antibodies and T cells against spike. So it's really hard to separate them. But we don't really measure functional T cells. We measure virus-specific T cells, but we don't know much about how they function during an infection. Wouldn't you agree, Amy? That's true. Oh, dear. WHO said the India variant is a variant of concern. Did you hear everything? anything about the black fungus associated with COVID? Yeah, they call it a yeah. variant of concern. I don't know why, because they're having a big outbreak and they have a, f a fraction of the people have this variant. It's an association. They should just vaccinate people. Making this a VOC does no good. Right? Do you think it does any good, Amy, to call this the VOC? I never thought a VOC was a, a term one should use for anything. And yes, I knew about the black fungus and it's because they like, don't have it. It's just a disaster. What What's this black fungus coming from, Amy? It's like it starts with an M, whatever it is. Micro. Oh, ma the, the one that causes dandruff. Yeah. Yeah. Malassezia. Something like that. Yeah. And so what? People are getting in malassezia? Yeah. It's like a secondary complication because you're immune compromised. And then it goes, you know, it's like almost, you know, it's like getting. When you're immune compromised and you have like some other disease and then you get like, yep. you know, with flu, you get staph and bacterial sepsis and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, here's an article in Dermatologic Therapy about diseases, dermatolog dermatologic diseases during COVID. Are patients with psoriasis and superficial fungal infections more vulnerable to COVID? Okay. <laughs> My new glasses are dope. Yeah, it's Ooh, good. Dope. It's good. I have I have uh, some blue ones at Columbia too for other podcasts. Now, I want you to see this. Gwen is is appreciative of your knowledge. Oh, great! Thank you. And so am I, in fact, Doctor Rosenfeld. Good. It's good. Can they still maintain iron lungs for the few remaining survivors who need them? Uh, my understanding is that, yes, there are a few iron lungs which are keeping a few people alive um, who have been in them for many years and they don't want to leave them. Correct. Uh, 
What would a molecular clock analysis look like on the output of a gain of function? Well, you'd have an interruption in the clock, right? Because you would take a virus from some point and modify it and then introduce it later and or it, it, its sequence wouldn't fit into the evolution of, of the virus. And, and this SARS-CoV-2, in fact, fits in very nicely in the clock of SARS-like coronaviruses in bats. Uh, Susan says, I think it's important to address the origins as these articles circulate at even prodigious universities. I believe it's our job to debunk the lies. Susan, I have spent a year to, trying to debunk the lies on TWIV. It doesn't seem to help. There's, there's ample evidence that this virus came from nature. There's no evidence that it came from a lab. If there were, I would say, okay, let's look into it. But as you know, the WHO committee is continuing its investigations. We're going to have three people from that committee on TWIV in two weeks. We'll ask them about it. Blue and green is perfect. Thank you, Plinky. Thank you very much. If you want to believe it, it is your right, but it is not evidence. Someone else said you can have your own ideas, but not your own facts. Somebody famous said that. Right, Amy? Yeah. What is your take on the recent U of F, I guess that's Florida, finding that fecal plumes transmit COVID in public bathrooms? So I haven't seen the study, but for SARS-CoV-1, there was some evidence of a super spreading incident in an apartment building that involved a fecal plume. So it can happen. It's pretty rare. But for SARS-1, it happened anyway. Fundraising suggestion. Auction the right to appear with TWIV via Zoom for a podcast. The winner would be allowed one on-air question, maybe more if it was a good one. A auction. That's a good idea. You know, if on my Patreon page, if you give, I forgot how much a month you can come on for an episode, but nobody's done that. <laughs> uh, in fact, Roger, the Wuhan lab is populated with many people who have been trained in the U.S. And I've spoken to many people, many virologists over the past week who confirmed that they do Western virology according to Western protocols. So... That's not correct. Um, if it was accidental, then that can be helped with safety measures, regulation, and weren't the origins of previous viruses like MERS found very fast. No, it took a couple of years for SARS-1 because wildlife sampling isn't fast. Well, where do you, you don't even really know where to look. Nope. So you're 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 pretty get much guessing, right? Yeah. And you're really only willing to look in a certain radius, which may or may not be correct, especially since we travel far more in the 20 years since ours was originally isolated. Right. So I don't really understand what's the purpose of saying MERS was found pretty fast after the outbreak. So you got lucky. But I don't get it. Hello, Vanity. Welcome. Thank you for being here again. Uh, another moderator. Great. Arthur agrees with you. The horse left the barn and who knows where it is. Yeah, move on. This is going to be another Wednesday. I need to get to bed early, so I can't watch the whole Q&A. Sorry, they're, they're all recorded. You can go check them out tomorrow. Oh, here we go. Any thoughts on the new PNAS paper with further evidence on the integration of SARS-CoV-2 DNA? There's no further evidence. It's the same paper that we reviewed as a preprint a few months ago, and we said take back this manuscript because most of it was artifactual. The artifactual parts, I think, were removed, but... This is an entirely really? artificial situation. <laughs> I just looked Where at they... it like two hours ago with my technician because she asked. And 
really? You, th you, you really feel like that the artifactual parts have been removed? I was thinking the whole paper was an artifact. Yeah, it's totally artifactual. It has no implication for pathogenesis of SARS-CoV-2. Has no implication on biology for SARS-CoV-2. What it yeah, does is shows you know, how you can manipulate three, what they consider three different, but really two different sequencing techniques using a nanopore and using an Illumina, using one kit by Illumina and using another kit by Illumina. Woohoo! A three year old probably can manipulate all of that. Yeah, not good. Not your not your own facts made famous by Patrick Monahan, Moynihan, but based on a saying yeah. from James Schlesinger. Thank you. Yes, that Adam. is true. Um, thank you, T. Klepper, for your super chat. All goes to supporting our new studio in Manhattan called The Incubator. That's good. Could virus cell fusion be more efficient due to a combination of spikes cleaved and non cleaved at furin? My understanding is that both need to be cleaved for maximal fusion efficiency. Is that correct, Amy? I believe so. Yeah. Good good paper we did last week on TWIV uh, talking about the furin cleavage site, its role in infection. And by the way, Amy's going to be on TWIV Friday, right? Yes. What's the paper? I haven't picked it yet. We will consult tomorrow. Okay. How's that? Well, we, it's good. We have a lot of we have a lot of gases to change tomorrow. CO two, right. liquid nitrogen. Can we talk about something useful? What best mask to wear? Well, Arthur, people come with their questions. We answer their questions. What kind of masks, Amy? What kind of mask do you think is the best to wear for a simple mortal? Well, I'm a I'm less, I'm just walking around in a surgical mask, but people wear N or K ninety fives. They get the end of the age. Excuse me. I know that there's like a ranking order, but really just wear them properly. Just wear any mask you want properly. Um I wear a cloth mask with multiple layers. But if you really want more protection, a surgical mask and a cloth mask on top, that works too. And you can get those. They're all available to simple mortals. And yes. I'm a simple mortal. Are you, Amy? Yes. Yeah, we're both simple mortars. <laughs> Mortar and Not pestles. Yeah. <laughs> Travel asks, is there any logic to the idea that vaccines can damage your immune system? No. Nope. None whatsoever. Uh, does Amy supervise PhD students? Uh, I don't have enough grant money. But if I did, I would. If, if I liked you, but I don't have enough grant money. Maybe with this next grant we can, but... I don't know. Amy would be a great trainer. Angela says, some people are questioning Fauci because he said in an interview that wearing masks wouldn't help us. Yeah, that was early last year, right, Amy? Yeah. He said he lied because of mask shortages. How do you feel about what he did? I, I don't think it was the right thing to do. Wrong. I wouldn't have lied. What about you, Amy? No, I, I think he did not make a good decision. Nope. And consequently, uh, that bad decision, because it wasn't prudently thought out, has led to uh, months of repercussions, which has led to an, a pandemic that has been the worst run pandemic of my lifetime. And, you know, I've lived through all of them from 1918 <laughs> onwards. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Um, yeah, I think influenza is the next pandemic. Really? And then I'm not it, sure. Yeah. I don't what do you think? think? So. What do you think? 
Um, I don't think it's influenza. Well, I, I, what do you think it is? Something else? A coronavirus or you don't know? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that it has to be a, a virus, number one. Um, but I think the next pandemic is more likely to be like one of these arthropod, you know, tick-borne while it, you know, rapidly adapting um, pathogens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not so, like, we have those, five, what, H5N1 or whatever, H5 virus spillovers, like, every three years, and they never adapt. I'm not, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. So principal manager says the best combo mask is an N95 with a valve with a surgical mask over it. You can put a decorative cloth mask over for an extra layer. I don't know. Daniel does not like the val uh, N95s with the valves. He finds them very offensive. Would you explain gain of function and its scientific purpose and process? Well, it's the change of the, it's a change in phenotype. It's any change in phenotype, really. I mean, most, we, we make gain of functions often when we make viruses with mutations and that you can do them with poliovirus, enterovirus 68, rhinovirus, SARS-CoV-2, whatever virus you want. Right, but I think that the problem is, is that gain of function has both, has synonymously been associated with virulence or pathogenicity mm -hmm. and that's not really true you can make it again a, a, a change in phenotype can be anything right sure we're we just happen to be most interested in that right um and the scientific yeah. purpose is that it gives you a a tool that is controllable so that you can dissect out uh, the process that leads to the phenotype that you're interested in, where it goes awry. Um, that's why they're important, is because they allow you in a controlled fashion to, to dissect each and every step that you're interested in, right? Yep. I mean... That's what we're doing, right? When we're trying to figure out how EV sixty eight goes from the respiratory tract to the to the brain, right? Yep. We're trying to, in a controlled fashion, understand every step of that process, and hopefully, by understanding that, you can develop anti, you know, small molecules that can impede it, whatever those are, whether or not they're pharmaceuticals or antibodies or, you know, RNA based, whatever. Right. Exactly. Is spike I think, a the, I think one of the major problems, I think one of the major problems about um, all of this is that people don't really understand what scientists do. You know, well, that's why we're here, right? Tonight to try yeah. and make inroads. Yeah, but it's not just about answering questions like about what mask you should wear. It's really trying to make it so you understand what happens in the room behind me, right? And that you you have some appreciation of what we do, why we work so hard, why we spend so many hours thinking about this and how you place it in the large picture of society, right? I think that's yeah. my most, I think that's one of my largest complaints about, about people who, yeah, who aren't scientists. They just think you come here, you add in some chemicals and it's like a play date. If I wanted a play date, I'd put on my Manolos, go to Saks, buy a new dress, and find a play date. All right, moving on. It, all right, is spike a subassembly of multiple proteins or just one protein if multiple is only the assembled subassembly present on the surface? It's three copies of a single protein, the spike, on the surface of the virus particle. 
Spike is one protein that trimerizes. Is that what you mean? Yep. yep. It's a trimer of three individual polypeptides. Yes. But that, yes. So it's, these are all red. The spikes, there's three of them there making each spike three polypeptides. Same polypeptides. Nothing else as far as right. we know. Seychelles, most vaccinated nation, has closed schools and households, can't mingle, blah, 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 Sinopharm. Okay, well, you know, it's not 100%. So even when a lot of, I think Israel has more vaccine percentage, right, than the Seychelles? Maybe I don't, wrong, I don't know what the Seychelles percentage is. What I know is that Sinopharm is not, the efficacy was in the 60s, right? Isn't that right? Yes. And Israel used Moderna, which was in the 90s. That's right. So let's do some math. So 50, 100 minus 9, 90 is 10. So 10% 10 of the population has a percentage of being breakout cases, right? 100 minus 60 is 40. So 40% of the population has the prop, prop of, has the potential of being breakout cases, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So what's go. the yeah. question? Well, that, that's it's the right answer. You got it. Is this gain of function that Fauci funded on SARS-CoV-1 responsible for a COVID nightmare? Absolutely not. The whole point was to avoid another coronavirus pandemic. What to gain of out, function are they adding, taking, to? taking spikes from SARS-like coronavirus circulating in bats, putting them into coronas in the lab and seeing if they infect human cells. So barrack study. Yeah. No, that didn't lead to this at all. No, no likelihood whatsoever. Mind wheels. I'm about to get vaccinated with Consino. I had COVID last July. Should it be okay? <clears throat> yes, you're fine. It does. We recommend that uh, people who have had COVID and recover get vaccinated. Cancino. You want to know what the Cancino vaccine is? It's an yes. adenovirus type five vaccine. And I don't recommend and anything. Daniel recommends. Yes, we don't I'm not recommend. an MD. Not I'm not an MD, right. so I recommend nothing. Daniel recommends. Real world data show mRNA 94 and 77, J&J 77%. I received J&J 10 weeks ago. Will I reduce risk to my kids by also getting an mRNA? No, no. Yes, you would, and there's no reason why you couldn't if you wanted to do that. What do you think, Amy? I think that's fine. I had COVID in January. You feel fine? Should I get vaccinated? Yes. We talked about this again on TWIV because we don't know the extent of your immunity after natural infection. It can vary from person to person, so... You should get vaccinated. That's what Daniel says. Get vaccinated. Yeah, but I can make that. I I can make the argument. You don't know the the durability of immunity from vaccine. It varies from person to person too. So and I'm not sure that I would use that argument. If clinical studies are not complete regarding COVID spread after two mRNA shots, then how can you say you don't need masks after complete vaccinations? That's what the CDC has shown. You can hang out with other vaccinated people. I think that's fine, but to hang out with non-vaccinated people, I don't think is a great idea indoors. I think that's wrong. So I don't agree with that. And I think Amy doesn't agree with it either. I'm not sure actually what you, what you think about that. Uh, I think that the studies that showed that it 
prevented transmission are because your antibodies are too high. I think you sh shouldn't have come out and said certain things and you should have prudently understood what the data said and then waited a significant number of, of a significant amount of time so that you would be in a more natural association state before you said anything about transmission and efficiency in the vaccines. I don't think it was a prudent decision or prudent statement. But I'm all about, what is it, Vincent? Thinking prudently? Yeah, you think prudently. So you just yes. tell me. <laughs> yeah. So Chris, been... Chris, go ahead. No, what, uh, Chris, what? Chris has a t chat. It's way down in the chat here. Uh, most mutations are loss of function, gain of function, are mutations that enhance survival, reproduction rate, host range, adaptation to new niches, to predict new pandemics. Gain of function. Yes, exactly right, Chris Knight. Thank you. It's good. My preschooler gets febrile seizures from minor illnesses. Are there data on COVID severity or multi-inflammatory syndrome, C risk for kids that get febrile seizures? I don't know of any, no. My source on that is Daniel Griffin, and he hasn't mentioned it. But it's an interesting possibility, right? Yeah, I think that this is a question clearly for Daniel. Which vaccine is your all-time favorite? Not limited to COVID or even humans. And which one stands out most to you? Wow, what an interesting question. Well, I can, I can answer that one. For yourself? Without even, yeah, but probably for you too, without even having to think about it. OPV. Yeah, oral poliovirus vaccine. I've spent many years of my life working on it. We're still working so, on it. Only type one, Amy. Well, that's all you're allowed to do now, right? If we were yeah. allowed to do two and three, we would, but we're, so, we're, we're thinking. Yeah. What? Do, do you, um, do you also, is that also your favorite? Yeah, it is. But I'm, I think my second favorite is uh, COVID mRNA vaccine because it was developed, it was tested in people in a year and it was, it works. It's just amazing. Bloody amazing. Can you describe some of the ongoing research in SARS-CoV-2 that may have clinical significance? You want to go first, Amy? No. So the paper we did on TWIV where they showed that the E protein of the virus, which is this little, little white one here, small membrane protein, can induce the production of inflammatory cytokines in uh, in cells, and that could lead to the severe COVID. So I think that's very cool because it suggests more interventions. But there's a lot more. Yeah. Amy saw something this week about a, some cross-reactive epitopes, right, among coronas. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think... I, I I don't ever I I don't think you can do research and say is this going to have clinical significance. I think you just have to do the research. That's interesting. And then, you know, today it might not be clear what the sig the significance of it is, but in five to ten years it might be. I'm not really a proponent of um, starting off that way. That's kind of like when somebody who hired me said to me, well, you know, Amy, people at that age, you know, start plotting out how to win the Nobel Prize. And I looked at him and I was like, three people win the Nobel Prize all year. If I set myself up to do that and I'm not one of those three people, I'm a failure. So I, th I don't think that you should, you know, you should uh, do that. But we're moving and they, to 845, and I have to plate up my helos and um, put overlay on. So we got like two more questions. When will they be able to tell us if boosters are needed? Personally, I don't think you can tell if boosters are needed for at minimum 18 months from now. 
Yeah, we need to see what's circulating and how the vaccines perform against them. And not vaccines performing against them in the terms of a tissue culture dish or even... No, no. You Disease have to actually yeah. age. Yeah, and if you did it in non-human primates, you'd have to age the non-human primates. No, you don't, but... You, you, you'd you have to sack if, them and it's kind of yucky. No, you don't have to do that. You can... You can. The current vaccines have been tested. For, for example, a few weeks ago, Morbidity and Mortality published a study in healthcare people where they said, okay, we're going to follow these people who are vaccinated and see yeah. who gets infected or not. So you can do that. And you can see what well, variants that's what I'm are saying. circulating. It's going to take you at least 18 months. It's not something that you can do any other way. That's what I'm saying. Is vaccine effectiveness late in the pandemic adjusted for existing increased immunity due to post-infection and vaccinated? No, no. Vaccine effectiveness is based solely on whether you're vaccinated. If you're talking about a trial, they exclude people who have been naturally infected. So if you want to know vaccine effectiveness after the trial, like this study that I just quoted, you have to follow a population of people who get vaccine or who don't. So the effectiveness is not adjusted, no. I have to get my shingle shot. Will it interfere with my COVID? Well, Daniel always says, um, you know, if you can't avoid it, get it, but you should give it some time in between the two vaccines. Do you know what he says, Amy? Uh, I think he says like two two weeks to a month in between. Yeah. But now it's getting easier to get COVID vaccines, so you could always postpone it one or the other. One more? One more. We all don't have the means of varying theory. That's why we're here. I understand. I'm sorry if I get impatient with the conspiracy theories, but I understand that you want to know from us, so point well taken. Well, I want to know how many other cons like how many how many of these people who believe in these consp this conspiracy theory believe in all other conspiracy theories that are out there? Or is it that this one has, you know, a very specific group behind it or something or something or other? Because there's lots of conspiracy theories that don't get as much play as this one does. Yep. Um. Well, this is a huge and, yeah. pandemic. That's why, right? Well, yeah, but just in general, like, you know, there's conspiracy theories about, like, you know, who has all the money in the country and who does not and various other different things, right? And, yep. I mean, my, my religion has a ton of conspiracy theories associated with them, with it, that have led to various uh, horrible events in history, I guess is one way to put it. Um, so, you know, I mean, that was part of what we should have learned from the 30s through the 40s, right? Is when to, you know, to ask more questions before you automatically start believing in conspiracy theories. So was this just one great marketing ploy that took advantage of what was done in the 30s and 40s and just, you know, enhanced exponentially. It's not Thank clear you, Amy. Me. All right. Liquid nitrogen, CO2, tomorrow. Otherwise, see you yeah. tomorrow. All right. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. A Yankee coach had a breakthrough infection. The team all had J&J. &J. Well, yeah, not surprising. Breakthroughs are going to happen. No vaccine is 100% effective. And that's not just COVID, but all the other vaccines, right? Any evidence of different biological behavior of these two variants? Uh, will WH, in fact, that's one of the problems is that 
there's very little work done except to observe these spreading in the population. So no, um, you know, even for the UK variant, which has been studied the most, um, there isn't any evidence. But if there is, we'll let you know. Thank you very much. It's my 12th birthday today. Thank you, Eric. I'm glad you like the glasses. They're just reading glasses, so I can't wear them around. But uh, if I need to get new glasses uh, this summer, well, you never know. Okay, Ace, here's the story. The vaccination, COVID is a disease. So the vaccination will stop you from getting disease, which is COVID. It will not stop you from being infected, but you're not likely to shed and transmit. That's how most human vaccines work. Eventually, everyone will be able to take the masks off because we're vaccinated. Not everyone is going to be vaccinated, and that's going to be fine. That's my personal view of the situation. Kansas. Hello, Kansas. Hello. Yes, Vanity Nutrition says vaccines prevent disease, not infection. That's correct. But they do dampen the amount of virus you shed after infection, so you reduce transmission. That's why herd immunity works. Vanity knows because she took my virology course last semester. Uh, I was told most healthy adults that are infected do not have any symptoms and are able to get rid of the virus without any problems. Yeah, 80% of uh, adults are in fact fine, but 20% are not. And that's why we've had three and a half million global deaths. We're trying to prevent that. Please do not guess. Okay. I'm not going to say anything, but I saw also um, another fungus in the news. It wasn't mucormycosis, okay? And I agree, I shouldn't guess, and I don't want anyone else to guess either on this uh, stream. No, that's not going to happen. As you just told me, uh, we don't know. So I'm not a fungologist, a mycologist. I was speculating with Amy, you should give me the right to do that. Is there any real-world evidence that AstraZeneca still protects against severe disease from antibody escape? No, it had a problem in South Africa, right, against the South African variant. And so I haven't seen anything else. Yes, that's a problem. Now, it is being used in a lot of places, so we should be able to get that data. But I, I, I'm a little... Uh, I'm a little... Um, confused about that. Malassezia is um, a fungus, but yeast are fungi also, Vicky. Thank you, Rob, for your super chat. Much appreciated. What happened to Amy's handle? I didn't get around to it. A lot of things this week going on. I just did a lecture to the University of Belgrade today in Serbia, plus many other things. So some things have to slip. I was going to do it, but next week. Uh, do models suggest another wave of cases at some point? No, I think we are approaching um, enough vaccination levels. Now, there'll be outbreaks in pockets of people who are not vaccinated, but in the general population, I think we've seen our last wave. That's my guess. And the more we vaccinate, the less likely that's going to be. And I think opening up is fine. It doesn't matter. The virus is here circulating, so it doesn't matter if you bring it in from another country, and variants don't matter either. So, no, I don't believe that the models are saying that at all. Are you really sure that the vaccinated people become infected? They cannot shed active? No, I didn't say that. They shed less virus, not enough to transmit. There's a difference. You need a certain amount of shedding to transmit. Below a certain level, you won't. That's how most vaccines work. The polio vaccine blocks polio very nicely, but it doesn't prevent infection. However, it does prevent transmission. So you go below a certain level of shedding to block transmission. Uh, Tom, Amy is the one. She's got to go back and do experiments. 
I, you know, I'm, I'm chill here in my basement, so it's easy for me. No problem. I could do this every night if you wanted to, but you would run out of questions. Please explain this mechanism. Ineffective innate immunity has been associated with lack of control of primary infection and high risk of fatal COVID. So when you're first infected, the first in immune response is, is called an innate response where the virus is sensed by your cells and they immediately produce interferons and other cytokines that can limit infection. And they can actually bring down the infection very much so that it never gets really going and causes a lot of damage. And most of the infections, that seems to happen. But people who develop serious COVID, um, they, have, they may have ineffective early innate responses. And as a consequence, the virus gets out of control early, very high levels early, and you have more serious disease. That's what's going on there. Thank you, Nazareth. It's very nice. I'd like to do even more, which is why I am renting a studio and I hope to go there and spend days making content. So, but I'm glad it's appreciated. Since uh, mRNA vaccines are being embraced, are we going to see them for others' diseases? Yeah, for sure. And they'll be tested absolutely for HIV, for herpes viruses, influenza virus, cancer, malaria. They're not going to work for everything. But for sure, they're going to be tested. And you know what? <laughs> they are... Uh, well, we're going to tell you about them here. I, I get distracted by some of the chat comments as I'm talking to you like this one. Fecal plumes is a poetic way of saying poop gas. Well, it's actually when you flush a toilet and it makes an aerosol, right? And then that spreads. So in, I think it was Hong Kong during SARS-1, um, there was an apartment complex where a sick man with, with SARS, he had also diarrhea, uh, went to the bathroom several times in an apartment, flushed the toilet. The plumbing was faulty, so the, the traps weren't, they removed the the traps, right, where the Water is present in the U-bend that prevents the gases from leaving, and the flushing makes a fecal plume. So it's not actually coming from your butt in this case. So more vaccine questions. Doesn't the adenoviral vector help push the T-cell response? J&J had 26 uh, preclude those who receive it to get a different vaccine in the future using the same vector. So adenoviruses do push T cell responses. And in fact, that's why an adenovirus vectored HIV vaccine probably didn't work. It may have made more HIV infections in the vaccine group because the adenoviruses induce T cells, which of course HIV infects. So yes, they do. So um, will the Immunity to J&J &J preclude getting a different vaccine using the same vector? It's a good question. I don't think we know the answer um, to that, but there are enough vectors of different types around so that we could get around that, right? And they could also modify it to change its protein structure and make it different so the antibodies wouldn't uh, interfere with it. If someone is fully Moderna vaccinated and gets exposed to COVID from another human, could that possibly be beneficial? Yeah, absolutely. So here's how it works. You get immunized, and then you, you're a couple of months out of immunization, and you have now memory B cells and T cells. So then you get infected, and your memory response kicks in. So the virus infects you, begins to reproduce a little bit in the upper tract, and then your B cells make antibody, your T cells, your cytotoxic T cells start killing infected cells. So they tamp down the infection and, and protect you from disease, but now you've got a boost to your immune response. You've got more memory made in the in the in the form of memory B cells and T cells. So yeah, these little boosts are good, and they probably happen all the time with various human viruses. Uh, much less so with polio now because there's very little polio virus circulating. Daniel Patrick Moynihan, Moynihan said you're entitled to your own opinions, but not your own facts. I always use that to people who say this is this and this is that. No, you cannot have your own facts. I use that a lot during the gain-of-function debate five, six years ago surrounding the 
uh, alteration of avian H5 influenza viruses, which we discussed on a recent TWIP. We revisited it. Asking for a vaccine-hesitant person. What happens to the COVID vaccine's lipid nanoparticle once it's entered the cell? Well, the cell digests it. It goes into a lysosome. So it's taken up into the cell in a vesicle, and the vesicle fuses with a lysosome, which is a bag of enzymes in the cell that degrades things. The RNA comes into the cytoplasm to be made to translate into protein, and the lipid nanoparticle is degraded, and it's recycled, basically. All the components are reused, and... Um, Everything is gone within a couple of days. Not a problem. And yes, there are great resources on the on Pfizer and also Moderna websites. Tons of information. You dig in a little, you can get PDFs with all kinds of stuff. I get slides from their websites for my presentations. Any evidence for antibody virus complexes involved in Kawasaki-like syndrome? No. Not a, are you talking about the... Kawasaki like in uh, COVID kids, right? Um, no, not to my knowledge. But again, it's very rare and not easy to study, so it's probably early days. Have we been too spike centric? I always thought so. I said last year, I forgot to get rid of Amy's name, sorry. I said last year, actually, we had a TWIV episode called Putting All Your Eggs in the Spike Basket. You know, we can second guess because we're sitting here. We're not we're not manufacturing vaccines. You know, we're not doing clinical trials. So we felt you should have other antigens. And so having just spike means there's a lot of immune selection pressure on the spike. And that's why we're seeing a lot of variants. The same thing would happen with infections, of course. So it would be nice to have other antigens. And I'll bet next generation COVID vaccines, and there will be next generation they're going to have some other viral proteins in them, for sure. For AstraZeneca, what do they mean they use chimpanzee adenovirus? So adenoviruses infect many different species on Earth, including humans. They infect chimps. And so an adenovirus, and these viruses cause eye infections, respiratory infections, uh, gastrointestinal infections. They isolated one from a chimp, and they modified it to be safe. And they use it to the um, AstraZeneca uses it to vector their spike vaccine, and the the reason uh, why is the theory is that people will not have been infected with a chimpanzee adenovirus, right? They're going to be infected with human adenoviruses because we get them all the time, and so having a chimp ad may avoid having immunity to the vector, so the vaccine would work better. That's the idea. But the uh, the J and J vaccine, which is a human adenovirus vector, works quite well anyway. So that's not essential. Um, and again, we get uh, yes. You're asking me to save these on Spotify. I don't know. I think you're the only one asking. I would like to do that. I just haven't had a chance. You want me to go back to all the back catalog and put them all up, or just start at some point? I was infected with corona twice in the range of 10 months. Is this similar to being vaccinated and revaccinated? Well, in theory, if you were, in fact, infected twice. Now, did you have two positive tests? And how do you know it was a different virus? Well, if you were really infected twice, then you probably don't need to get vaccinated. If women have stronger immune systems, why don't vaccine manufacturers offer a smaller dose? Because you would have to do a clinical trial of the smaller dose, and that would lengthen the time that we could respond. So you could do it now going forward if you wanted to, but it would still take time. And so that's why they're not just giving everybody the same dose. Because older people may need more, right, for the... For the shingles vaccine, was it the shingles? No, flu, high-dose flu for older people. And I'm older. I'm over 65. They figured it out at one point uh, that older people needed a higher dose. And so at some point in the future, we may figure out what to give other people f with COVID vaccines for sure. Do patients with two times natural infection with SARS-CoV-2 shed virus less on the second? 
hasn't been looked at for natural infections. No, it's a hard study to do because you'd have to take a population of at-risk people, right, and follow them on a weekly basis to make sure you catch their infection. So it hasn't been done. Uh, Nicholas Wade doesn't know anything about molecular biology. And th this arginine codons, by the way, are part of the furin cleavage site. And other coronaviruses have them. Other bat coronaviruses have them. So it's completely not remarkable at all. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a writer, great writer maybe, uh, if you think, but doesn't know what he's talking about with science. If I saw evidence for a lab leak, I would tell you. But these arginine codon argument, no, not at all. Uh, thank you, Ditching the Grind 3, for your support. Really appreciate it. Are there articles referring to furin? Um, well, furin is a cleavage site in the spike, right? And there are a couple of recent ones that are informative. Let's look at the function of the furin cleavage site. We did one on TWIV last week, and we talked about that paper and a second by Vinit Manicheri's group, all of which they remove the furin site and they ask, why is it there? And so go to this TWIV show notes, microbe.tv slash TWIV, and you can find it. Thank you, John, for your super sticker. Really appreciate your support. Lies or what is fueling distrust? Lies by whom? I'm not lying, folks, but nobody's listening to me except you. You know, we have 466 people here, but that is not enough. But I do agree that early on, too many people lied. Yes, I think I know what you mean now. Sorry. Does it look like SARS-CoV-2 will devastate Africa? We, you know, there's a lot of underreporting, but I would, I would guess yes, because there's hardly any immunization going on there, right? Where do we stand on AstraZeneca? So I think the chance of thrombotic events are really, really low. And they are much lower than the risk of getting very sick from COVID. So if it were me, I'd take it. But, you know, I'm 68 and I'm a guy, so I'm not in the risk group. I think if you're in the risk group, then you should consider not taking it. That's fine. Uh, and that's what they're telling people here in the U.S., Yep, that's right. Many viral infections damage your immune system, like HIV trashes your CD4 T cells, and you die of infections that you would normally be able to clear, for sure. We're getting to the masks now. Oh, so now we've got the next pandemic, Nipah. Probably not. It's been around for a while. It's not really transmitting well among humans. I think it's going to be an influenza virus. Any information or thoughts of this doctor, New Jersey ID doc dying in India, fully vaccinated with mRNA? As I said, no vaccine is 100%. So you could say, well, maybe he got infected with a variant, but on the other hand, he might have been in the few percent that are not protected. So you really don't know. I think you have to be very careful about these anecdotal uh, predictions or Discussions, not prediction. Sorry, how do you make your next pandemic prediction? I was reading the next comment, you see. So we go on history. I've been doing virology for 40 years, so I pay attention to virology history. And I know that there have been many flu pandemics in the 20th century. 1918, 1957, 1968, 1977, 2009. Five regularly every 10, 20, 30 years. Definitely going to be a flu pandemic because... All the viruses that are ready to jump into us are out there in aquatic birds. We've had now three epidemic coronaviruses, all from spillovers from animal species into humans. Those viruses are still out there in bats. We're going to have another one. That's how I make my predictions. I think the viruses of bats and rodents and birds are the most likely to spill into people.
you know, SADS is severe acute diarrhea syndrome, which was a pig outbreak in China that spilled over from a bat into pigs. How about that? Montevideo, welcome to the, uh, the, the live stream. Is there a good reason to prime with one vaccine and boost with another? Well, you know, there, this, the Gamalaya Sputnik vaccine, they have two different adenovirus serotypes, right? They prime with one and boost with the other with the idea that the immunity will not interfere. Um, but if you wanted to do this, you'd have to trial it before you could use it. Prime boost scenarios are tried a lot with HIV, but they never work. Polio survivors have, yeah, they can use BiPAP ventilators, yeah. So I also understand that many people who have, who have been in a ventilator for many years, sorry, have been in an iron lung for many years, choose to remain in it. I've seen interviews with people and they say, I'm, I'm comfortable here, I want to stay there. Yeah, but I agree, some people don't need a, an iron lung. Thank you, Angela, for your... Super chat. Really appreciate it. Having known Amy for as long as you have, what viral subjects really excite her and would invoke an enthusiastic response from her? Um, she likes art. So if you talk about art with her, she would really like that. She likes going to museums and she likes clothing too. Designers. She, I always ask her, well, who's this designer? And she can explain to me who they are and where they've been and where they're going and so forth. Those are two things that uh, she really likes. But I'll tell you one thing that I don't think she's ever mentioned. She's a really good cook. She, she brings me cookies that she makes, makes tons of stuff, but doesn't, can't eat it all. She brings it to me. And she is always telling me the things that she makes uh, when her family visits and so forth. So she's really into cooking. I think she could actually have a career in cooking if she wanted to. Thanks, Jack, for your super chat. Really appreciated. Well, the cheap disposable surgical mask, is that what you mean? But all the healthcare workers are wearing them in the hospitals. So they can't be that bad. If you couple them with a cloth mask, they'll be fine. Thank you, Joe, for your super chat. Really appreciated. What do we think about the gain of function in Wuhan? Not, not a source. It's not legitimate because the, any virus close enough to SARS-CoV-2 was simply not there. They're not working with it. We know this, not just because they've told us, but they, what they have published is not close to SARS-CoV-2, so it wasn't there. Thank you, Squoyster for your super chat. Is it possible, even to a small degree, that if vaccination stops working on a new variant, the vaccine might be more damaging than good? Mm -mm, no. Here's the thing that people keep forgetting. <clears throat> even if a variant infects you, say you've been vaccinated and you get infected with a variant that is not blocked well by antibodies induced by the vaccine, you're still going to not get terribly sick because your T cells are going to protect you. The T cell epitopes are not changed in any of the variants. And if you want an explanation of that, go listen to the TWIV with Alessandro Sette. Brilliant. And this narrative is being ignored by mainstream media because it doesn't fit their gloom and doom scenario. So you'll be protected. The only issue here is whether we have to modify the vaccine so that virus levels don't get too high initially by variants evading the vaccines, the, the antibodies induced by the vaccine, but that hasn't happened yet. So I'm not worried. Any more info on possible myocarditis after Pfizer? 
No, I, I'm waiting to hear more. Dan, Daniel talked about this last week, and and you know it takes time to to look at this and see. You know, myocarditis, I agree, is a serious issue. Is it really caused by the vaccine or not? Don't know. No more information. Uh, Daniel Griffin said India is using ivermectin and remdesivir like water. Yeah. Uh, they they believe that they work. You know, there's enough anecdotal evidence about ivermectin. Don't don't jump on me, folks. I know you. some of you think it works. I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, but, you know, Daniel likes randomized clinical trials. And he doesn't see any that he think are worthwhile. And I, remdesivir does not work. It really does not benefit your your ability to live. So that's why he says it's a waste of time. They should use monoclonals and vaccines. You know, we, we're trying to donate monoclonals to them. It's very difficult to do. Are there any active attenuated SARS-CoV-2 vaccines in trials? Not that I know of. Um, so there have been, if you look at the various lists of vaccines in development on the various websites like the Milken Institute and others, you can find attenuated vaccines and flu mist types. The attenuated vaccines, I think, are still in preclinical development, so they're a ways off. And um, flu mist, you know, I had heard that some were in humans, but they're not very advanced. So what we have now, and you know, Novavax, the protein-based vaccine, apparently they have production problems, so they're not moving forward with their authorization application. Yes, Israel has the highest percentage of the population vaccinated compared to other countries. I have a slide from the World Data Institute that I just showed today during my lecture, which shows that. How do I convince family members who are afraid to get the shot because they don't know who to believe? Any suggestions? Well, you know, um, you could... There, there are these vaccine town halls uh, sponsored by American Society for Virology, asv.org slash education. You could sign up for one of those and ask questions. People like Rich Condit and Brianne Barker go to those. I don't. I simply don't have any time left in my week to do that, but they're good sources of information and they're friendly and you can ask a lot of questions. But I would say that I got the vaccine. My wife got it. My kids all got it. I'm, I'm, it's safe for me to tell them to get it for sure. I think when you do the personal approach, it works more than data. And I wanted to bring up Chris's statement, which I read earlier. This is good. Look, most mutations are loss of function. So when we introduce mutations into viruses in the lab for various purposes, many of them inactivate the virus. And some of them may cause a gain of function, but mostly it's only if we plan them. And um, as Chris says, they can change the survival reproduction rate, host range, adaptation to new niches, etc. So... We do gain a function to understand where a new pandemic virus can come from. Do efficacy percentages include the first 10 to 12 days uh, following inoculation? Well, they do, but you don't see a divergence until 12 days or so between the control and vaccine groups. So that's factored into it. Question from TWIV753. How do you destroy a stock of virus and plasmids if requested by CDC? Put them in a box and put it in an autoclave. You know, and I presume you know what an autoclave is. You know, 21 pounds pressure, 120 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. It uh, inactivates the virus and destroys the plasmid. And that's it. Then it goes in the red, the orange bags, which get incinerated. And they're gone. 30 years of uh, work in an instant. Does ibuprofen reduce effectiveness when you already take it regularly? So I asked Daniel this. He said, go for the vaccine. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt. How do I convince crazy people that the virus is actually deadly? Three and a half million people have died during this um, pandemic. 
you know, you can go to a World in Data website and show those curves. And they're different for different countries, of course, based on reporting. But a lot of people have died. Everybody knows. Um, but, um, yeah, it's a problem. I don't give clinical advice. If you, you're saying it's often inaccurate, should not be given. Give me an example. I typically don't give clinical advice, B.A. humdinger. And um, I'm okay to be corrected, but I think I don't give clinical advice. It's safe to get vaccinated five times to enter the lottery. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to give you clinical advice, but you don't need to be immunized five times to get the immunity that you need. We have reverse transcriptase that can turn RNA to DNA and produce spike proteins under future distress. We do have reverse transcriptase, um, but the, the experiment that you're referring to, the paper that was published, was a highly artifactual situation where they overproduce reverse transcriptase in cells and then they introduce SARS-CoV-2 RNA and they show it can be copied into DNA and will integrate. It's hardly, highly artificial because our cells have very, very low levels of RT, reverse transcriptase. Now, we, that's not to say that occasionally RNAs are copied to DNA and will integrate, but th that is an irrelevant experiment. I don't even know why it was done. It was based on finding sequences of, human, of the human genome joined to uh, SARS-CoV-2 RNA, but that turned out to be artifactual. So the basis for that experiment was an artifact to begin with. Thank you, Twiff, for all you do. Finally, I did it, both Jabs and Zurich. Excellent. I'm visiting Zurich in April of 2022. It's all set. Um, so I'll, I'll publicize it here for sure. Maybe we can have a get-together or something in Zurich. I love Zurich. It was there once before or twice. And are there any attenuated SARS code? No. As I said before, sorry, I already answered that. Uh, super chat from Megas. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, someone asked how they're going to know about my vaccine course which is going to be live stream in the fall. It must be lower down in the chat, way lower down. And so let me answer it. So I'll announce it here and I will talk about it on Twiv. I'll tweet it and so forth. It will be starting in about September, right? It will be an online course live streamed like this, except I will have slides. I will give you quizzes. I will ask, you can ask questions. I don't know, maybe twice a week. I'm going to find out a time that will work for many companies globally. I can't do all because Australia, Asia is always a problem, but uh, I will do that and they'll, they'll be recorded and so people can watch them later. <laughs> My daughter wants to know if her stuffed animals can get vaccinated. Sure. You could do a mock vaccination just to get her into it. Yeah, the HPV vax is one of the few, uh, vanity here is channeling the course, one of the few vaccines that prevent both infection and disease, it induces very high levels of secretory antibody in the mucosa. Human challenge trials are, are not worth it. They're too dangerous because even young, healthy people who they recruit typically in these challenge trials can get very sick. So I don't think it's worth it. There's, um, there are a lot of comments about the vaccine, and yes, it's getting much easier to get here in the U.S. <laughs> and lots of conspiracy theories. Suggestion, a point-by-point -point takedown of Wade's lab leak article. So I, I was thinking of actually making a video of my own because it doesn't unburden my two co-hosts who have done it many times. And where I'd go through on a video one by one, I'm sure that would get a lot of views. So I'll do that. Yeah, 
If they are unclear how natural, long natural immunity lasts, how do they know the vaccines provide six-month protection? They've done studies six months out, right? Because the first phase one was done at the beginning of last year. So they can look that far out. Thank you, Ronnie D1970, for your super chat. Any flumis type in trial? Not that I'm aware of, no. Not that I am aware of. Any advice for other scientists on how to convey current scientific consensus to people highly politically motivated but not necessarily scientifically literate? Speaking from Brazil. So this is a problem because if someone's politically motivated, they don't necessarily want to listen to scientific fact. So you have to depoliticize it and just talk about your health and tell them, as I said, I think it's always good to personalize it depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, and then very calmly and in a nice manner provide the facts and respond to them and acknowledge their concerns and so forth. Now, how do you do this? The problem is that, you know, social media is the best way, but there are all kinds of alternative facts on social media. So, you know, I used to be big into Twitter and Facebook, and I've left because it's too much of a mess. And people call me names when I express an opinion, which is, you know, well concerned <laughs> after 40 years of virology research. I stopped doing that. I have my discussions on TWIV and here on Wednesday nights. So um, that's what I think. It's not easy. Not easy. Yes, I, I did take Amy's name off of the mic. Sorry about that. Got a lot of things happening here. <laughs> you should see the setup. Maybe I should put a camera here sometime so you can see my actual it's like a tv studio here with wires and monitors and stuff all over the place sorry about that sorry about her name uh, being in the middle of the screen mm. you know if you uh oh thank you charlotte for your super sticker very kind of you I hope you haven't retired from your from your art teaching. It seems like you like to do it. Do twice infected individuals shed less on their second infection? So someone asked that up up above, and we don't know. We don't know. Hey, Neva, how's it going? Thank you for your support. Really appreciate it. Have you seen Rich lately? And thank you, John, for your super chat. Tell Amy thank you. I will. Yeah, if you want to get questions to us, so I'm scrolling here. I'm looking for ats. It was an at Vincent Racaniel, at Vincent, at Amy. But you guys are having chats among yourself, which is great, right? And I want to quickly go by those and find the ones that are questions for me. So um, that's what we're doing here. Thank you, Neva. Very kind of you. And if you have a chance, please uh, give it a thumbs up at the bottom of the video there. That helps get people interested in it. Thank you, Post Polio News, for your super chat. Oh, yeah, so most of last year we had food delivered, and now for the last, since January, I think I've been going to the supermarket. I'm fully vaccinated. I still wear a mask. I think it's fine, and I realize I'm not 100% protected, so I'm still careful. And until more people are vaccinated, that's the way I will behave. Uh, post-vaccine myocarditis, yeah, it is possible. It's being investigated. I don't know what the mechanism would be. Polio vaccine, Sabin and Salk, if we had both, are we better protected? I had both. I had Salk as a kid, and I had um, Sabin uh, as an older kid. And are you better protected? Yeah, you get a different kind of protection from Sabin. You get gut protection. Salk vaccine gives you antibodies in your blood, which will prevent you from getting polio, as does the Sabin vaccine. But your gut is protected again with the Sabin vaccine. You shed less. Um, and with the IPV, the inactivated Salk vaccine, there's more shedding. Now, hydroxychloroquine is, um, is not an effective treatment because the pathway it blocks is redundant in lung, lung cells. 
So you can inhibit the entry through endosomes with hydroxychloroquine, but then the virus enters through the cell surface using another pathway. So that's why hydroxychloroquine on its own doesn't work. Thank you, Josh, for your super chat. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you. I can get a little prickly. I'm sorry about that. And that probably is why I get thumbs down. <laughs> oh, well. Earl of Mannheim, thank you so much. To the haters, twiv forever. <laughs> Where's Osterholm? I don't know. He's not on TV anymore. You know, he predicted that March was going to be the best month. The worst month, I mean. And it didn't happen, which is okay to be wrong. But he shouldn't go away. Or maybe he got tired of it. Uh, thank you, Overjoyed. Yeah, come, come and ask questions. I love them. A lot of questions tonight. Um, I'm hoping you don't work too hard after you get the studio. Um, I will. I think um, it's going to be a little better. I don't have to go into Columbia every day. I'm not going to drive every day. I'm really tired of driving 38 miles each way. I want to take the train and get off and walk two blocks and go to my studio. That's one of the reasons I'm doing it. And by the way, I'm doing it with Daniel, who's helping me to support it. So all of you are thinking, where well, are you getting the money for this? Daniel is helping a lot, okay? And that's great. I couldn't do it without Daniel. All right. One more here. Do you feel Pfizer on top of AZ will be okay? Yes, I don't think it will be negative at all, even though it, it uh, hasn't been studied. I think that's going to be fine. All right, folks, that should do it for another Wednesday live stream. Thank you all for coming. Great questions. Really, really good questions. Uh, and there are many more that we didn't get to. Uh, let's see if I, let me get through the super chats. I'm sorry. Tom, thank you for your super chat. Yeah, Nicholas Wade, sorry. Thanks, Blinky, for your super chat. Really appreciate you folks who donate every week. Thank you, Earl of Mannheim, for your super chat. Uh, thank you, Lori J. Way, hydroxychloroquine. I weighed in, and we did a TWIV on it, actually, which explains why it does not work. Um, it just cannot work, and it does not work. Thank you, Westfield 90. Appreciate it. I'm here since, we're here since the beginning for you guys. Damon, thank you for your super chat. I should have done this before. Thank you, DR, for your super chat. Some of us don't shut off the non-COVID twivs. Even if unlikely, is it possible for a blood-borne virus to evolve to be transmissible? Possible, but unlikely. Never seen it happen before. That's what we go on, our history, right? Thank you, Joe, for your super chat. Please do a rebuttal. Okay, we'll do it one way or another. Uh, thank you, Susan, for your super chat. Joy in se Seminar and Journal Club. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't had those in a while, have we? Overjoyed. Thank you so much. Long haulers? Not yet. Boy, it's going to be a while before we have treatment for long haulers. But people are working on it. Sandy, thank you again for your super chat. And that should do it. Uh, good night, everyone. Have a, a great rest of the week. And we will see you next week.